Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionellos, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our physiology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. Today, we'll compare between the cholinergic and the adrenergic fibers. With that said, now let's get started. Let me just tell you that I have a playlist on this channel called Comparisons, where we compare between gout versus pseudogout, aspergillus fumigatus versus aspergillus flavus, iron deficiency anemia versus anemia of chronic disease, Cartagener syndrome versus situs and versus totalis, and yes, cholinergic versus adrenergic. All right, let's get into it. So here is your spinal cord segment. You draw a line in the sand, anything behind sensory, anything in front is motor with few exceptions. As you know, all of the autonomic fibers are motor. They are never sensory. And that's why they start here. Lateral horn cell in front of the line because they are motor. After they leave the lateral horn cell, they go into the ventral root or ventral ramus and then they become spinal nerve. And since we are talking autonomic nervous system, we will relay in a ganglion. So we have preganglionic fiber and postganglionic fibers. The preganglionic is usually B-type, which means it's thin and myelinated. It appears white, but C is unmyelinated. It appears gray. These preganglionic fibers secrete acetylcholine. That's why we call them cholinergic fibers. However, the postganglionic, it depends. If you're parasympathetic, you'll secrete acetylcholine and we will call you cholinergic. But if you're sympathetic, you'll secrete norepinephrine most of the time and we will call you adrenergic because norepinephrine is the same as noradrenaline. Sympathetic or adrenergic, basically you're running from a tiger. You're running from your life. Fight, flight, fright. Parasympathetic, on the other hand, is rest, digest, read, eat, and take a dump. And while reading, you got emotional and you started crying. Yes, lacrimal gland is parasympathetic. It's the sphenopalatine ganglion. It's your facial nerve. And facial nerve has some autonomic fibers. So here is your sympathetic nervous system, thoracolumbar. Here is your parasympathetic nervous system, craniosacral. And we have talked about this before. Any preganglionic fiber is cholinergic. Translation, it secretes acetylcholine. However, postganglionic fibers, it depends. If I am sympathetic, I'll secrete norepinephrine most of the time. But if I am parasympathetic, I'll secrete what? Acetylcholine all the time. Don't forget that sympathetic is catabolic, while parasympathetic is anabolic, which makes perfect sense. In sympathetic, you're running from a tiger. You gotta be catabolic because you need to break down carbohydrate into glucose, burn the glucose in glycolysis to get you some energy so that you can run. On the other hand, parasympathetic, you're sitting on a toilet and eating a sandwich. Eating a sandwich, let's build up energy. Let's store some energy for a rainy day. So you'll convert glucose into glycogen, for instance. Here is your sympathetic response, fight and flight, as discussed in the past videos. The antecedent ones in this playlist called physiology. Here is your parasympathetic response, rest, digest, eat, read and take a dump. All of this was dissected in detail in the preceding videos. Now the big picture, types of fibers, you have central fibers before the ganglia and peripheral fibers after the ganglia. Okay, all of these central fibers are cholinergic, they secrete acetylcholine. All of them, whether you're targeting a skeletal muscle or you're targeting your ganglia. And please do not forget that your adrenal medulla is a modified ganglion. So, all of these will secrete acetylcholine, therefore they are cholinergic fibers, whether they are parasympathetic, sympathetic or just for skeletal muscle. And this is motor, not autonomic. Postganglionic, we disagree. If I'm parasympathetic, I'll secrete acetylcholine, hashtag cholinergic. But if I am sympathetic, I'll secrete noradrenaline, hashtag adrenergic. With the exception of sympathetic to sweat glands, these fibers secrete acetylcholine, hashtag cholinergic. So you have central fibers and peripheral fibers. Central fibers, some of them are somatic. This is N sub M, M for muscle. Some of them are preganglionic autonomic. The receptor is N sub N, N for neuron, because a ganglion is a neuron. Soma. Peripheral fibers, we gotta be careful. If you are parasympathetic, you'll secrete acetylcholine and you're cholinergic. But if you are sympathetic, you'll secrete noradrenaline, hashtag adrenergic. Cholinergic fibers, adrenergic fibers. Cholinergic could be nicotinic receptor or muscarinic receptor. Even the nicotinic is divided into N sub N and N sub M. You find N sub M on skeletal muscles, N sub N on ganglia and on your adrenal medulla. 
adrenergic fibers for the sympathetic system. Receptors are either alpha or beta. Not only this, every one is also two. Alpha one or alpha two, beta one or beta two. Shamefully, there is also beta three for lipolysis. How many types of cholinergic receptors do you know? I know two types, each has got two sites. I know nicotinic and muscarinic. Oh, all of these are cholinergic. And each one is subdivided into two subtypes. So nicotinic, we have the neuromuscular junction, N sub M, and the postganglionic cell bodies, N sub N, this is your ganglia. Muscarinic, on the other hand, you have organs supplied by the parasympathetic, all of them are muscarinic, and only two organs supplied by the sympathetic, sweat glands, and in some textbooks, the blood vessels of skeletal muscles. Okay, medicosis, I have a question now. Sympathetic almost always secrete norepinephrine. Why did the sympathetic change its mind and secreted acylcholine when it was contacting a sweat gland? Let me tell you. Acylcholine is parasympathetic, right? Right. Parasympathetic is secretomotor, right? Right. Secreto. Yeah. Acetylcholine is the hero of secretions. If you want to secrete anything, acylcholine is the best. Oh, I get it. Now, here is your cholinergic fiber and here is your adrenergic fiber. Cholinergic fiber, I'm cholinergic. What do you mean? I secrete acetylcholine. Perfect. Where did you get this acetylcholine from? From acetyl-CoA and choline. No kidding. What's the enzyme? Choline acetyltransferase. Love it. Acetylcholine gets stored in vesicles. These are clear vesicles. And then you have an action potential coming in, opening voltage-gated calcium channel, calcium ions rushing in, rupturing the vesicle by exocytosis, and then acetylcholine is out. Acetylcholine has three options. I can act on N sub N receptors if this is a ganglion or an adrenal medulla. I can act on N sub M receptor if this is a neuromuscular junction or a motor end plate on a skeletal muscle. Or I can act on muscarinic receptor if this is a smooth muscle or a cardiac muscle. Okay, acetylcholine, you have performed your job properly. Now let's remove you. Oh, why would you like to remove me? Because if we leave you alone, you will lead to dumbbells, diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchospasm, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, sweating, salivation. This could be fatal. This is like organophosphate poisoning. Let's get rid of you. Now comes the choline estrase enzyme or the acetylcholine estrase enzyme. Let's degrade this acetylcholine. Let's break it down into choline and acetate. The choline will be recycled and let's make new acetylcholine and so on and so forth. Adrenergic fibers, on the other hand, they secrete noradrenaline or norepinephrine. How do you make norepinephrine? Here is the song. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, and stop. But if this is an adrenal medulla, phenylalanine, tyrosine, dopa, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Why? Because the adrenal medulla has PNMT enzyme, phenylethanolamine N-methyltransferase enzyme, the adrenal medulla is capable of converting your norepinephrine into the more potent epinephrine. However, the adrenergic nerve endings do not have this PNMT enzyme, therefore they cannot make adrenaline. They can only make noradrenaline. Okay, now I have norepinephrine in my vesicles. Calcium comes in through an action potential, ruptures the vesicle by exocytosis, norepinephrine is out. Norepinephrine has two choices. It can act on alpha receptors or beta receptors for two different functions. Okay, I have performed my job properly. Let's remove me. Okay, we will remove you. The most common mechanism is active reuptake into the nerve terminus. There is another mechanism. We can destroy you and break you down by MAO enzyme inside the synaptic terminus or by COMT enzyme, which is catecholamine, because this is a catecholamine O, which means zero. We will put the methyl group in a bad position, in a zero position, converting this valuable norepinephrine into pieces of trash. That's why it's called zero methyltransferase. Next, some of this norepinephrine will stay in your blood, making you alert so that you can be careful and pay attention while running from a tiger. However, in your blood there is no such thing as acetylcholine. It got broken down by the pseudocholine trace. Some quick notes, the MAO enzyme can regulate presynaptic level in the mobile pool, but it cannot regulate the one stored in the vesicle. You can take it to the next level and learn about centrally acting cholinergic antagonist, peripherally acting cholinergic antagonist, nicotinic agonist, nicotinic antagonist, muscarinic agonist, muscarinic antagonists, alpha agonists, alpha blockers, beta agonists, beta blockers, and my autonomic pharmacology course. Go to medicosisperfectionalis.com and download it today. It's on sale.
And here is today's question. Which of the following is true about norepinephrine? Let me know the answer in the comment section. You'll find the answer in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my pharmacology courses. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionals, where medicine makes perfect sense.